Thank you. Next question, the member for London North Centre. My question is to the Premier. Speaker, the loss of OHIP insured eye exams is a huge blow to families in London and across the province. Despite months of notice, the government stopped negotiating with optometrists, and kids, seniors, and persons with disabilities are starting to miss their eye exams. They are not receiving their health care. A London mom, Jessica, told me how increased screen time during the pandemic has hurt her children's eyes. She told me that her oldest daughter has been complaining about her eyes since the amount of screen time drastically increased last year with online schooling. She is now struggling on a daily basis. It's affecting her ability to learn. Karen is another London mom who reached out to me to let me know her daughter was experiencing difficulty seeing the board. She wrote to me saying, imagine my surprise when I called our optometrist and was told that I was unable to book an eye exam. Kids have had their learning disrupted for the past two school years, and now Read the, the lack of eye care is making this new school year even harder for them. Why isn't the minister putting the proper funding in place to make sure kids get the eye care they need and deserve? The parliamentary assistant, member for Edmonton Lawrence. Speaker. Thank you to the member opposite for this important question. We're extremely disappointed that at the urging of the Ontario Optometrist Association, some optometrists have chosen to withhold publicly funded services for our youth and seniors. And it's really due to the fact that the OAO continues to decline an independent third, mar uh, mediate, third party mediator's invitation to come back to the table and the conditions that have to be met for negotiations to resume. It's really concerning because they continue to tell the public, and the member opposite seems to have uh, adopted this, that they are at the table when, in fact, they are not. And the current impasse lies squarely at the feet of the OAO, which, instead of participating in these good faith negotiations, is choosing to demand an outcome before allowing negotiations to start. The government has made a reasonable and fair offer, and it's the beginning of uh, future negotiations, and we would just like the OAO to come back to the table what? so that people such as the ones that you have mentioned in your question can get the eye care services that they should get. Thank you. Supplementary question. Back to the Premier. You know, the members' disappointment and concerns should be about the underfunding on your watch. Speaker, optometrists and London families are ready for OHIP-funded eye care services, but this government keeps telling them no. That's concerning for Londoners like Dennis, who rely on annual eye appointments to do his job. Dennis is a senior in my riding who works as a crossing guard near his local school. Eye exams are a regular part of his job to ensure kids can get to school safely. But his appointment this year was postponed because this government refuses to negotiate with optometrists. Unless this issue is resolved by November, Dennis risks not being able to do his job. I also think of persons with disabilities such as diabetes, like my constituent Mandy, who wrote to me, I am unable to book or receive care from my optician due to the current government's unrealistic determination of fair pay to opticians. I will go blind and become a drain on the government if this does not get rectified as soon as possible. Question. Speaker, when is this government going to stop saying no and make sure seniors like Dennis and people like Mandy can access the care they need to go about their daily lives? Again, the Parliamentary Assistant, the Minister of Health, to respond. Thank you very much, Speaker, and thank you to the member opposite. Obviously, this is a very important issue, and anyone who has been denied an appointment, who needs to have an appointment, and has any harm or suffering as a result of any delay, should reach out to the College of Optometrists. Optometrists have professional obligations to fulfil, and if they don't do so, the College of Optometrists will help direct people to a, another provider. I'll just say our government has made a fair and reasonable offer, an immediate compensation increase of 8.48% retroactive to April 1st, which is a catch-up fee of increases physicians got, a one-time payment of $39 million to catch up for uh, increases that they didn't have for the last decade under a former government, future fee increases aligned with physician fee increases, as well as a commitment to immediately establish a working group to look at the overhead costs they, they seem to want us to look at, and we're happy to do that. Finally, a commitment for ongoing monthly Response. discussions through an optometry services review committee. We are at the table, ready, willing, and able. They need to come to the table so that we can negotiate a fair and reasonable agreement, which all Ontarians want.